Now what we use here, our term here is Yinjamara Ween, and that is that means respectful fire. And when we go out and light the burn here, we're what we say carry the fire with us or you know take the fire with us. So when we come out here and we're lighting, we're using you know all the native resources that we've got on the ground here to take that fire with us. Fire has that strong spiritual aspect and you know they were there caring for country. A burn in my opinion is like doing a smoking ceremony, but cleaning country, releasing you know the sort of the pain that country's going through and you know opening it up for new growth and new emotions to come through. What you're seeing is you're seeing Darawa and fire and uh, air coming together and it then starts speaking a story to us. My old manager in Canberra once said to me, he said, you know, that we've, we've studied fire for about 200 years. He said, your people walked with it and observed it for 30 something thousand years. It's just calm. That's the best way of putting it, it's calm and it's not ferocious. And I think if people could really see that from our perspective as, you know, fire is not just a danger, it's a tool. I think we'd be able to achieve a lot more out on country. You know, it gave us an opportunity to actually feel like we're in the sort of the shoes our ancestors were. We've been burning in riparian areas basically forever, you know, and the, and the fire trickles through there and it, it probably only, you know, affects the soil down to about that deep. So that's a benefit for, for the environment. It, it, it actually assists in cracking some of the, the native seed. When you're next to a tree, you can see all types of bugs and insects you know, climbing up the tree. That gives them the opportunity to escape. Cultural burning promotes uh, migration of animals. It promotes regrowth of uh, different plant species. Our environment has depended on fire. Um, for thousands and thousands of years. So this is a really important project that spans not only ANU, but partners within local land services, natural resource management and Indigenous communities. We're working on a burning project led by First Nations people across Riverina and southeast of New South Wales. Alongside the burning program, us at ANU are conducting a ecological monitoring project. We're in a period of rapid global environmental change. Now is such a critical time to do these kinds of projects given the changes in climate, increases in fire frequency, challenges with biodiversity. So it's a very important project tackling many of these key issues. We really want to empower First Nations communities in restoring traditional burning practices. These systems have been unburnt for hundreds of years, so it's critically important to monitor how they respond to the reintroduction of these kinds of burning practices so we can inform future monitoring programs. That's one thing I'm really excited about is to see the, the monitoring side of things, but also the adoption of our cultural indicators into the monitoring. I think bringing two, you know, strong knowledges together is the best way of moving forward, you know. We have a strong intangible connection to our country and we see country from a different perspective, but how Western science sort of collects and coordinates that data is really interesting for me. And it's a strong evidence base that we can set to actually prove our point, you know, this is a crucial management tool for country. Our cultural practices aren't the only solution, but we could be a part of those solutions. Now with this project, this is sort of compiling everything that people have been looking for the, for the last few years to sort of back up and support what we're doing. You see the darker smoke start to come out, then avoid, avoid that smoke at all costs. Cultural burning is a process that has so many dimensions. It has a spiritual, cultural, social. Seeing that passed on to, you know, a younger cousin of mine was really empowering and, you know, really allow me to recognise, you know, I'm actually carrying on what my grandmother wanted me to do. Mate, you get pride out of that. As an Indigenous person, you know, you're leading something that's been going on for, for years and years and years. Yeah, so this is one of the areas that we burnt here and, you know, it was, it was a fair bit of build up with phalaris and other plants. The results, some of the results are here. 
when we're doing the cultural burning and you know some of the benefits for the community is that we go out and actually do some training with the community. A lot of us believe that this is this is what we have to do. We all have obligations as Aboriginal people and, and land managers. When they done these cultural burns and at the end of the day, mate, they have the biggest smiles you can you can see on anybody. Given the opportunity to come back in here and showcase something that's like 25,000 years old it is pretty special. This is where I grew up. We, we grew up here every day. We're in this area every day. So it's something you sort of strive for, you know, in, in, your, in your career that you've chosen, is to come back and, and, and work with your family and your community in making, making the environment a better place for everyone. Mm -hmm.